Welcome back all my aspiring mathematicians. Did you know that there are two subjects that you will always need in life and guess what? You will also use them on a daily basis and those two subjects are English and math. Even if you were not successful in math or you did not take high level math classes during your school years, it's fine. You still need to know more than the basic addition, subtraction, division, or multiplication when it comes to math. You will need to know one extra skill that was taught to you in school that you would need to apply it throughout your life, and that is dealing with percent. Now, what is percent? Percent is a number or a ratio expressed as a fraction of 100. And we usually use the percent sign. And this is what the percent sign looks like. Now, there is a formula that we use when we are calculating the percent of something. If we are calculating the percent of a number, we usually have the formula which is P, the percent of a number. And so we do P over 100 times that by the number and we will get the value there which would be x so this is the basic formula that we would use when we are calculating percent since percent is usually written as the fraction of a hundred we can simply say that ten percent would be written as ten over one hundred because that's the fraction there and obviously because ten percent is written as 10 over 100, we can further reduce it and simply say that it is 1 tenth. Now this goes for not just 10%, but if we want to find 20% of a number, it is simply going to be 20 over 100, which is going to give you 2 over 10, which is also going to be 1 fifth. So that is what the fraction would be equivalent to 20%. Now we can go further and we can do the same thing for 30%. Simply same way, 30% is going to be 30 over 100, which is going to simply be 3 over 10, 3 tenths. And if we do 40%, that is going to give us 40 over 100, which would be equivalent to 4 over 10. And we can further reduce that to 2 fifths. And we could go on to 50%, which would be 50 over 100, and that would be reduced to 5 over 10, and further reduced to a half. So these are the basics that you need to know about percent. I can continue, and I can also write out what 60% would be. So 60% in this case would be 60 over 100, but when you reduce this, you're going to get 6 over 10, and 6 over 10 is also equivalent to 3 over 5, 3 fifths. 70% is going to be 70 over 100, and when it is reduced, it's simply going to be 7 tenths. You cannot further reduce 70%, but 80% can be reduced, right? 80 over 100, you're going to get 8 over 10, or it's going to be reduced as 4 fifths. Then you have 90%. 90% would be 90 over 100, and when it is being reduced, it's simply 9 over 10. You cannot have it further reduced there. You can further go down the line and not just deal with the ones with the zeros on the end. You can deal with numbers that has 5 at the end, such as 15%, right? It's 15 over 100, and when it's further reduced, because you're dividing this by 3, it would be simply 3 over 20. And if you do 25%, which would be 25 over 100, you further reduce that, it's going to be a quarter. And if you continue and you do, say, 35%, you can do that also, 35%, you will end up with 35% being reduced to 7 over 20. And if you want to continue and do, say, 75%, I'm just jumping the gun instead of doing 55, 65. 75% 75 is 75 over 100, which is further reduced to as 3 over 4, or what we call 3 quarters. Now, those are the basics that we need to know 
first, you might be saying to yourself, why do I need to know about percent? But guess what? You need to know because if you're out shopping and you need to calculate the sales tax or if you need to calculate something that is on sale and you want to know the discount that you'll be getting if they say, oh, you're getting 20% off or 25% off. You need to know how to calculate what that amount would be before you go to the cash register. You also need to know about percent if you are at a restaurant and you are paying for your food and you need to leave a tip. Not only that, even if you take an Uber ride or a Lyft ride and you want to tip the driver, you need to know about percent because you just don't want to be left in the dark. No one wants to be in the dark, but guess what? Be ahead of the game and know your numbers. You're not just using percent if you are shopping or you are leaving a tip when you are at a restaurant. You also use percent when you are calculating commission or if you're a realtor or if you know someone who's in that field and you are buying a house from them, you also want to know your numbers and you may not have calculator or you may have a calculator. So these are the ways that you need to know how to calculate percent and use them. If you have a product or service that you do offer to the public and you need to get royalty for that, you need to know how much percent that royalty is and you can do your calculation before that money comes to you. So, or even after you get your money, you can go back and do the math on your own to make sure that you are not being robbed. Because guess what? A lot of people who don't know how to calculate percent usually get robbed. Yes, you have to know your numbers, folks. And this was one of the reasons why I'm doing this tutorial for you. So let's get right into this where I can show you simple ways of calculating percent even if you don't have a calculator. Another easy way of calculating the tip is that because you know that percent is simply as a fraction out of a hundred and the basic concept is that one if you are dividing by 100 then you are going to move two spaces back from the right to the left so if you have say 60 percent and i need to write that as a decimal or find out what it is you can simply now have your 60 and you're going to move two spaces back and this is going to be 0 0.6. So this is another concept that you need to know how to use. So in general, if we're dealing with 10%, we can know that you write your 10 and you're going two spaces backwards from right to left. So this will now end up with 0 0.1. Now, yes, that 0 0.1 is the same as doing it as 1 over 10. Because 1 over 10, if you're dividing by 10 now, you're moving simply this 1 over 10, which is simply dividing 1 by 10. So you're going to move one space backwards because you have simply one zero here. When you have two zeros, you're moving two spaces. When you have one zero, you're moving one space, which this is going to be equivalent of 0.1. So those are the two basic concepts that you need to know to apply whether or not you are using a calculator. Now, one other tip that I must say to you is that, yes, I know you're probably going to be saying to yourself, but if I have a calculator, why do I need to know this? Most of the times you may not have a calculator and yes, you're going to tell me, oh, but I have my phone all the time and I can use my phone. But guess what? Your phone probably you know, is dead and what else are you going to do? You just have to rely on your brain. So I'm going to show you a quick tip of how to calculate when you are using your brain and not using the calculator. So let's get right into it. So say for instance, you are buying a dress and it costs say $100 and you have to pay a sales tax of 10% that is a tax on this item. So we know off the top that 10% is going to be 110 or you can say you can move it one decimal place over because this is what you're dealing with, which is 110. So I'm going to take my $100 here 
and I'm going to move one space over and that is going to be $10. So off the top, you know, it's going to be $10 added towards this. So you have your $10 here. So it's $100 plus the $10 for the tax will be $110. Now, another thing I must say to you is that we know that at a restaurant, usually you give a tip of 20% or what we call a gratuity. It's the same thing. So usually it's 20% nowadays. Very few restaurants allow you to give 15%. For the most part, you have to give a gratuity of 20%. So let me show you an easy way how to calculate the gratuity of 20% on your bill. Say for instance, your bill is $200 and it's 20%. So you know that it's times 20 over 100, which we know is, we want to know what that number is. So we have this 20 over 100. What we're going to do now, simple, easy step. You don't want to go straight to calculating the one fifth. Some of you may not off the top know that 20% is one fifth, as I showed you before. And so you will not be able to go straight ahead and say one fifth of 200, which would be $40. But for those of you who do know that, this is what you have to do. So that X over here is going to be $40 for a tip that you will have to pay. So the quick tip that I'm going to show you now is that you are going to simply know that, okay, if 10%, right, of this amount, you're going to go one space over, right, which now would be 20. So because I went one space over, so 10%, of the 200 is going to be 20 because you're going one space over, right? What you can do, take that 20 and then multiply it by two because now it's 20% you're trying to find. So because you multiply it by two, you're going to get $40. So give you another example and we're gonna work with this. Say for instance, you are buying something and the bill is say, $330 and you need to calculate 30% of this. So 30% of this, you're simply going to move over because it's 30% first, we're going to deal with the 10%. 10% of, of $330, you're moving this one decimal place over, which is going to be $33. And then you're going to take that $33 and you're going to multiply it by three. It will be $99. So if you have the 30%, you're multiplying it by three. If you have 20%, you're multiplying by two after you have calculated the 10%. But remember, you must start off first with calculating the 10%. If you are, say, using the same $200 here and you want to find 40% of $200, all right, we are simply going to take 10% first, which 10% of $200 we know off the top is going to be 20. Then we're going to multiply that 20. We're going to multiply the 20 by 4 because we are doing 40%. Whatever amount our percentage is, if it is more than 10%, we're going to multiply by that number. If it's 40%, we are multiplying it by 4 because 10 into 40 is going to be four times. So 20 times four is going to be 80. So our 40% of 200 here is going to be $80. Now I must say to you the same thing applies for 50%. You multiply it by five after you've calculated the 10%. So now I want to show you another trick. And this is if you're calculating say 15% of something. So if you want to find 15% of, let's start out with $100 because I want to show this to you. First, you're going to find 10% of $100, which we know we're going one decimal place from the right to the left and we're going to get $10. Now, you know that 5% is half of 10. So what you can do, you can multiply this by 
right? Because it's one and a half. So you can multiply by 1.5 or you can simply know that 5% is half of 10%. So half of $10. So half of $10 is going to be $5. And now you can add the $5 to the $10. So you have $10 plus $5 will be $15. And so your 15% there of $100 is going to be $15. You might say to yourself, oh, this is a simple, easy number that you can work with. But what if you want to find 25% of another value? So I want to say choose 25% of let's say $240. So what you're going to do, first we know that 10%, we're taking 10% of the 240, and 10% of 240, you're moving one decimal place over, is going to be $24. So because you're moving one decimal place over is $24, then you know that to get the 20%, you can do it in increments. You can do it now, 20%, you're going to, multiply by two what you got for the 10%. So you're going to do $24 times two, which is going to be $48. And then you're going to do half of 10, 10%. So half of 10%, which is the, the value there. So half of $24 is going to be $12. So you're going to add that $12 to the $48. So 12 plus 48 is going to be $60. So on the top, you know that 20% is going to be 20% of $240 is going to be $60. I want to show you, even if you simply did the 25%, we know that is 2.5 right because 20% is 2 and the 5% is 0.5 which is half of the 10% you can simply multiply your 10% value which is $24 times 2.5 when you multiply 24 times 2 is going to be $48 and then half of 24 is going to be another $12 so you get your $60. And if you want to go the long route and you know off the top 25% is going to be a quarter, you can do a quarter of $240. And when you do that, you're going to simply four into 24 is going to be six times and you have your zero there. So it's going to be $60. So you have ways that you can calculate your percentage based on the information that we have here and the tricks. Whichever is easier for you, you can apply that. You might be saying to yourself, okay, this is easy to do if I'm calculating 20% or 25% or so, but what if I'm calculating 9%? But guess what? If you are calculating 9%, say 9% of, let's say $220, okay? First, we're going to do the concept of the 10% where we are going to do the 220 and we're going to go one decimal place from the right to the left, which is going to be $22. But 9%, the difference here to 10% is 1% difference. So you have your 10% here. Now you have your $22 here. If you're doing 1%, 1% is going another space over, which now you simply, because 1% is one over 100. So you're going another space over. So you're going two space in general. So what you can do now, you're taking one space over. So that is going to be $2 and 20 cents. So what you can do now, you have your 10% here, right? So you're going to do your $22 subtract your two dollars and twenty cents and this will give you when you bring your zero zero here you're going to do the math properly because some of you 
you need that so we are taking a one from here and borrowing it we're bringing it over here you have your zero this is 80 cents and you taking your one here bring it here you have your nine here so it's 19 dollars so nine percent of 220 dollars is 19 dollars and 80 cents so simply what you have to do as a refresher is that you first calculate your 10 percent then calculate the one percent which you know you are going to take the 220 and you're going to go two decimal places over because one percent is taking the 220 and you're going to one two decimal places over that is going to give you the two dollars and twenty cents and you're subtracting your value of the one percent from the ten percent to get the nine percent so this is the nine percent and you can apply that concept if you're calculating 8% of something or even 8.5% you can further find 8.5% of this value if you need to and the trick here is that you already have your 10% you already have your 1% and you need your 0.5% which is half of the two dollars and 20 cents so your 0.5% there would be one dollar and 10 cents so what you're going to do you further subtract another one dollar and ten cent from this which would be eighteen dollars and seventy cent is there so now you can say that eight point five percent of two hundred and twenty dollars is eighteen dollars and seventy cents you can test this and see if it's correct so you do your eight point five we know 8.5% over 100. So 8.5%, right? We're going to have our 8.5 here. And we need to go back two decimal places because we're talking about here uh, divided by 100. So you move back two decimal places here, right? So it's simply now 0 0.085. You can simply calculate that onto your 200 and you will notice you will get $18.70 there when you do the math. So the other way that you can calculate your 8.5% of the $220 is what I showed you before where you took the 10%, right, which is $22 for your 10%. And then we know that we need to calculate our 1%. 1% of this is going to be $2.20. And 0.5% of this, which is going to be $1.10. So now that we have these two, right, we can add these up, which would be $3.30, right? That is your 1.5% here. And... To get the 8.5, we're taking the $3.30 from the $22. So we have $22 minus $3.30. And that will give us 70 cents is your change. And then you take away the one from there, which would now be 21. And 13 from 21 is going to be 18. And you're left with $18.70. So in conclusion, now that you know how to calculate the percent of a number, you can go ahead and apply it to whatever it is that you need to find the percent, whether it is tipping your Uber or your Lyft driver or tipping your waitress or waiter at the restaurant, or it could be simply calculating the discount price of an item that you see the tag that says, oh, 20% or 25%. You may use it if you are buying a house and you want to calculate how much your realtor is getting as a commission or if you are a salesperson yourself and you are selling an item and there is a commission that is associated with that item, you need to know how much you will be making in commission. So this is a vital information that you will need throughout life. You don't have to be the greatest person at math, but you need this concept. Trust me, it's not about being a genius when it comes to math 
or knowing how to shrink your numbers, but is knowing the concept of how to apply percent. You will always use this no matter what in life. Even if you are buying a car, don't rely on what the salesperson is telling you. Be ahead of the game and know how to calculate the percent properly. With that being said, I hope that you like what you have seen and you will hit the like button. And guess what? If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Don't keep this information to yourself. Share it with your friends and family members and others around the world so they too can learn how to calculate percent. We don't want to be in the dark. We want to be ahead of the game and know our numbers. So please share it. And thank you for watching. See you soon on the other side to come. Bye now.